It's Lost in Plot, and today we have Shut In. Shut In is a story about a single mother with two kids who gets trapped in her pantry by her junkie ex-boyfriend and his junkie friend. There you go. How many times have you gotten trapped in your pantry? So it's actually a really great metaphor for the story they're trying to tell. This woman, our protagonist, is cleaned up, right? She's trying to sell her mother's home and move to a new place with her two kids. She doesn't have her safety net of her mother to kind of support them through the process. She's gotten clean, and then all of her demons come back to trap her in the pantry. Yeah, the subtext is really not so much subtext. It's very much worn right on the sleeves of this movie. Um, a lot of the motifs, a lot of the metaphors, it's very much out in the open, in your face, and in some points, even on the nose. And it's an effective thriller because she's trapped in there with her two little kids off alone in the house for over a day while these two junkies are milling around looking for money. So it is a very much tension-filled thriller of a script. A lot of good suspense. It's directed by DJ Caruso. He does a very fine job. And it's written by Melanie Toast. What did you think of this script? I thought the script was, was good. I thought it was serviceable. Um, I thought the directing was exceptional. I thought the directing really elevated all of it. I thought it was a tremendously done job. The script was in just inventive enough because you got a, a woman stuck in a pantry. Like, are you going to sit there and watch her for, for flail around for an hour and a half? But they did a, a good enough job with the script being inventive and creating certain complications that really drove the intrigue up, especially with the second half, kind of that middle pivot point. Yeah, I thought, if anything, I wanted a little bit more out of the story and the characters, especially her boyfriend and, and his friend played by Vincent Gallo. Vincent Gallo coming back after so many years. The the star writer-director of Buffalo 66 back in this. He's a weird guy. <laughs> well, he's been, been banned from Hollywood for so many years and, and now he's back. He was perfect for this role. Yeah. And did a fine job. So I wanted a little bit more of the character development for those pieces. It is a very short film at only about 90 minutes. That's you what don't thrillers that are supposed to be. Get it done in an hour and a half. Quick, economical, set in one location, done on a tight budget, but effective. Effective with the suspense and the scares for what it was. Now, the hook of this is really where it's coming from. So you can only watch Shut In on the Daily Wire. Daily Wire is a conservative outlet that is suddenly taking all their money and trying to produce films. And they're saying Hollywood gives you all of this political ideology woke bullshit, and their promise, their edge is... We're not going to do that at all. We just want to give you a great film and a great story that entertains you. And did this do it? Well, they told it. They, they, they came a lot closer than most Hollywood offerings do. That's for damn sure. Um, but for me personally, if anything holds this film back, it's, it's a very visceral adult thriller. But I felt like it had a bit of like a Hallmark kind of core message or moral to it with nana's apple butter and the religious iconography being right on the nose and stories of redemption it got a little bit heavy-handed i thought in its own right with some of its subtext and its messaging to the point that it's so close but i had to direct a few points for me personally because i thought it was just too heavy-handed with its messaging well that's the worry right is you say you're not going to do what hollywood is doing and give us all of that woke political garbage but are you gonna bend it and go way the other way and that you've you've sanitized it so much on the other side of the political spectrum that it's still not entertaining and still not good and i don't think shut in did that at all it came a little too close for comfort for me but not enough to ruin the proceedings it was an entertaining thriller i definitely enjoyed my time i thought it was worthwhile um but the heavy-handed messaging is a little too close for comfort for me as in like all right we're reacting so hard to that that we're basically doing the other, the same thing in a, in a, in a different flavor. See, I didn't think it was too bad because I know that is a part of uh, rehab and your 12 steps. Is a lot of people will look to the Bible and look to religion to kind of help them through that process, which is I, I kind of took that as part of it here. Yeah, but the $100 bills taped to like each individual passage in the Bible and stuff like that. And then she's got to knock the crucifix down and that kind of helps her figure out her situation and find her way out. And Nana's apple butter and the recipe and all. It, it felt a little too schlocky and Hallmark holiday type movie for me at points. And it didn't jive with how visceral 
and adult of a thriller it was for the, the remainder of the proceeding. Fair enough. Now, what's interesting about this as well is how this film came to be. I'm all for studios out there or media outlets that say, we just want to entertain you. We just want to give you good yeah, stories and good films. Storytelling to... in earnest. Right. We're not going to try and hit you with political ideology. So I'm on board for that. So this script was on The Blacklist. The Blacklist is a website which collects all the best unproduced screenplays in Hollywood. So this is how it was found. It was sitting there. Somebody said, yeah, that's great. I can make it for a small amount. Let's do it. And it actually went into development at New Line Studios for a while. And at New Line Studios, well, they tried to tinker a bit. They said they looked at this script and they said, you know, suburban women aren't going to watch this because the kids are in danger. So they took the kids out of the story. That's the first thing that they did. Okay. The other thing was... That, that would break the story. The whole point is... Well, we're not gotta, done yet. We're right. not done yet. I watched interviews with the producer who talked about shepherding this film into creation and getting it back from this development hell process that it was in at New Line. The other thing that they did was they didn't like the ex-boyfriend and his junkie friend. So they changed it into a supernatural dog. Like a, like a yes, ghost, a ghost that's dog? the movie you were going to get if New, if New Line kept this. She would have been trapped in the pantry by a supernatural dog or something to that effect. Some kind of dog or animal trapped her in there. And this was actually being circled by Nicole Kidman and Jason Bateman and some, some big name stars. But that's the vision that New Line had for it. That's where they were going. So pandemic hit it went off the production slate and this producer was able to grab it and snag it back and said hell with all that shit we're going back to what the original script was and that's how we're going to do it well when you compare it to that when you compare it to that it's no small miracle no it is it is in fact a miracle that it got made in the vision that was originally intended which is far superior than what they sought to water it down and into um, that's interesting so i have hopes who knows if a Daily Wire or any kind of media outlet is ever going to be able to compete on a regular basis, but I think they are getting close. They've got more films coming out. This one, uh, you know, I'm all in favor of it not going away from the Hollywood system, but to your point, maybe it's not, that's not enough to make you a great film. No, it's not enough to make you a great film. It makes it a more earnest and honest attempt at storytelling and at movie making, which is appreciated and I think everybody should pay attention to and support because the more diversity of offerings we get, ultimately we're going to do better for it. Um, but I don't think you would call this, if you're judging it by the same bar as any other film, I don't think you would by any stretch call this a great and, and memorable film. Not a great or memorable film, but a good film. And I had this one alive at a 6 out of 10 because it is an economical thriller. There is real suspense. There are very good performances. It's shot very well. Vincent Gallo does a great job. I wanted more out of it. I thought that you just kind of gave me surface level entertainment. And you could have pushed a little bit further into some of the other characters and maybe expanded the scope a little bit. But it was a tight budget production. So that's where I had it. I had it at... I was tough on this film. I put it. I, I killed it. I have it dead at a five out of ten, only because I'm so conscious of the fact that it's being produced by a conservative media outlet that I was hyper tuned into the fact that I wanted to see where the messaging would be and if they were really going to tune it all the way back and just give you an earnest story, or if they were going to make sure that it still sought out a specific agenda to serve and. It wasn't as egregious as most modern films are with their wokeness and nonsense like that. It actually detracts from the storytelling, but it was still present and heavy-handed enough that it left me with a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. For that reason, 5 out of 10. Fair enough. Now, I thought they were good values, but I will agree with you. They were a little bit heavy pushing it and very yeah. on the nose. But that's what we have for Shut In from The Daily Wire. There's our thoughts. Guys, if you've partaken in this film, if you found it, if you've seen it, if you have thoughts, please leave them down in the comments section below. Like and subscribe. Check us out on Twitter, and we will see you all on the next one.